Oh, hello again. Just a brief one. Um, I've been around for a while, been working on a sort of uh, opus major about um, homosexuality. Um, why is it wrong? That's not what I'm going to be talking about today, or that kind of links in. Um, more to do with, um, well, that study will be more to do with the uh, Church of England's recent decision making. And um, anyway, uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll post something eventually. Uh, but it's quite, got to sort of go into things with a, quite a bit of detail. But this time I want to talk about um, uh, the Jesus people, really, and particularly uh, about a guy called Lonnie Frisbee, who some of you may well have heard of. And uh, I think it was interesting, really, that with the Asprey outpouring or revival or whatever it is, which seems to be sort of smouldering on in various university campuses across America. I'm not aware of it having broken out anywhere in the UK, but uh, I just found myself on a sort of YouTube paper chase or video chase, uh, looking at old films about the Jesus people from the 70s, uh, because both Dawn and I, we were, we were saved in pretty much the same month, the same year, 1973. And um, Dawn was at art school, I was still at school. And we were really saved on the sort of the tail end of, of the Jesus People movement. Um, although neither of us were sort of hippies, maybe being at art college, Dawn was a bit bohemian. Um, and I grew my hair reasonably long, as much as Captain Craythorn would allow me at school. <laughs> we often don't remember having various sort of arguments with with him particularly when i became a christian he said it's not right to have long hair at wells and i said well jesus had long hair he's always betrayed it. anyway it's all, it's all very silly but uh, reasonably good natured although i think he was trying to make a point but um yeah so we were on the on the on the sort of end of that and 90 boys in my school of 600 were in the christian union and people were getting saved every week and we were praying frequently I remember weeping for souls and leading people to Christ. Um, you know, it, seemed, it seemed like no week would go by without one or two people becoming Christians. And um, we confessed our sins to one another. And uh, I just thought that was the nor normal Christian life. And then, you know, the years afterwards, I've realized it, it wasn't. Um, and kind of never really got back to that sense of of revival that might be something to do with being young and carefree and you know, didn't have to have a job and family responsibilities and all that sort of thing so and, and interesting with asprey it's a similar student type kind of outpouring um and people were drawing sort of parallels with the jesus people movement in the 70s and it just so happens that there's a a film that's just been made coming out called the jesus revolution and um, it's really about the start of, of that. And it, it, it sort of centers on Calvary Chapel, which is a sort of stage church. I don't know which denomination it was in at the time. And, uh, and then the pastor there welcoming in hippies who were being saved. And uh, one, of the, one of the prime movers in that was a guy called Lonnie Frisbee, a sort of five foot six, long haired, bearded, at that time evangelist really <clears throat> and uh, I, I bought a book the beginning of a trilogy um, by R Robert or Roger Sachs I think it's S-A-C-H-S which you can get from Amazon and uh, it sort of details his early childhood and coming into the things of God and uh, he had a terrible upbringing was severely beaten, rejected by his own father who eventually went off and then weirdly his mother married the husband of the woman he ran off with, his, his father ran off with and he was extremely cold to him, rejecting and favoured his own children with uh, Lonnie's mother. So a lot of, lot of deep wounds and he was sexually abused by the 17 year old neighbour who babysat him and his parents didn't believe him 
and so it went on for a few years and then eventually they moved and he got out of that but um has kind of relevance really to so he was a kind of broken man a lot of a lot of problems stemming from that um but it's really thrilling to sort of hear his encounter with with god he he was in right in the middle of the height ashbury uh, hippie revival which is a uh, Across the intersection of two roads in San Francisco where the whole scene burst forth and he was sort of saying a lot of drug taking a lot of witchcraft eastern religions new age stuff beginning to bubble up um, a lot of homosexuality the, the sort of gay liberation movement feminism um, the, the whole hippie type vibe and the music etc all began to sort of come out of this this area and um, but he um, he used to apparently go off to various canyons around there where the hippies would all sort of take throw off all their clothes trip out on LSD all day long have sort of orgies and all that sort of thing so yeah you know it was it was quite a quite an interesting scene <laughs> and that he was in the middle of all that and then he was but still seeking God and he had, he'd had a Christian kind of upbringing and a, and a Christian experience when he was eight of giving his life to the Lord and but he'd gone away from all that rejected all that. but in the middle of one of these sort of times in one of the canyons he had a real encounter with God um, the Spirit of God just came and spoke to him and told him that and gave him a vision of, of thousands of young people um, responding to what he was saying and um, but anyway, really not, not to go into all the details, but uh, he's, he's a, an interesting figure because he after that he went down to Southern California and started preaching to the hippies and he would move in Signs and Wonders. Um, and he, he would say, which was kind of not really no come Holy Spirit and people would 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 respond, but lots of them getting saved and delivered. And uh, many stories are coming out of that. Um, one, one story, he was in a cave by himself praying on a sort of deserted part of the coast. And um, he uh, felt the Lord say, go out and meet five. There are five young men walking down the beach. And he sort of said, well, it's crazy, Lord, because nobody comes down this part of the beach in February. <laughs> is when it was. But anyway, he said, right, I'm going to be obedient. And that was kind of a mark of his life, really, obedience to what God was telling him to do a real mark of his life following the urgings of the spirit and he went out and these five there were five guys walking down there and he spoke to them four of them became christians one railed against him very angry and called him all kinds of names and blasphemed and all that kind of thing um, but he baptized the other four in the freezing water in the sea nearby southern california strange to think it could be cold but apparently it was and um and just left bless the other guy and he went off and anyway um somehow he was sought out by this guy later on in the day i don't know how he found him but saying and he was sort of ashen faced and said um, when i left you i wandered off by myself because my friends had sort of done something i i despised um and then he said i heard the audible voice of god speak to me and say go back and speak to my servant and he'll tell you how to become my disciple so he came back found Lonnie Frisbee and so that, that kind of stuff was sort of going on around him um, and I think it was all sovereignly chosen for that and uh, so he he just used to sort of gate crash things and and his, his big thing was let the Holy Spirit do what he wills in the midst of any kind of meeting uh, regardless of you know how things were set up and what what was expected the formalism of, of meetings and, um, and I think eventually that that led to some problems with with Chuck Smith who was the pastor I mean now his church had grown meteorically they received the hippies half the church or a third of the church left because they couldn't stand what was going on but eventually they had to move into a huge tent because they had sometimes thousands of people mainly young people coming and the, the move of god uh, the jesus people move was just extraordinary i mean thousands and thousands of young people who were uh, sort of 
had been tripping out and into all kinds of stuff were saved because they were looking for something. They rejected the, the past and rejected the form of Christianity that they'd seen before. And that was what was interesting, that these newly saved hippies transformed the face of Christianity, the way we do worship now, the sort of soft rock kind of band worship came out of, of the musical genre that came out of the Jesus people. Um, the second chapter of Acts and Barry Maguire and Larry Norman and various Maranatha and all kinds of, 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 of music ministries came out, came out of that. And uh, the gifts of the spirit and, and a, a greater degree of informality in, in some meetings. I mean, I think in many ways we sort of crept back to more, a more formal thing, but also, but, but the Holy Spirit's moving front and foremost in the front room, not shunted into the back room. Uh, but it caused problems. People didn't like it. They didn't like people, you know, sobbing and laughing and, and, and getting right with God. You know, God's order, when God comes and uh, restores order, not the kind of order we, we like necessarily, but an inner order in our hearts and in our minds and in our sick bodies. And um, so it's just very exciting reading about this and um, that this guy really was one of the, not the only by any stretch of imagination, but one of the prime movers in, um, in the Jesus people movement and um, so an awful lot came out of that changed the face of Christianity now around the world and a wave of young people getting saved and many of them becoming leaders in the church who are now leaders people in their 60s 70s <coughs> uh, retiring you know like me uh, so but an interesting thing about him was that he died of AIDS at a young age so I think in mid 40s and so there's always been this sort of scandal associated with him that he uh, did, he, he never identified as gay, he never, he never really espoused a gay lifestyle. And, and there are people who roomed with him and were his best friends who will say this. Um, but obviously there were times when he, because he was rejected a bit by Chuck Smith and later on by other leaders, because he was hard to handle and probably because he was a, a bit of a rebel because of his brokenness from from the past from his childhood things that had not been healed or dealt with fully um, he probably had times where he had homosexual pick, um, hookups and unfortunately probably contracted HIV from those and fully admitted that this was you know he was at fault in his book he comes back to the Lord fully towards the end of his life. He's reconciled with all the people, these major figures. And uh, But you can kind of understand why something like that would be hard to to kind of deal with. You know, oh, you know, God seems to be using you, but it's messy. And I get a lot of upset people. And oh, goodness, you know, you've got these character flaws and weaknesses. But you seem to have a heart after God. God seems to not be ashamed to come and honour what you're doing and anoint you. Uh, reminded of that scripture, you know, where there are no oxen, uh, there's no mess. In, uh, in other words, if you want oxen and all the good they bring, all the work they do, all the meat they, they might give you, you know, there's a bit of muck there too, so uh, doesn't doesn't he doesn't excuse himself for that. But looking at his past life, you can kind of understand where he's coming from. So there's that sort of um, aspect. I mean, he's been almost claimed by the LBGTQ community as the sort of the gay evangelist. But that that he has 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 especially uh, denied, and his friends say no. You know, he might have, he might have strayed, he might have fallen, but he, he, he would always get up. I mean, he was married at um, some point, but his, his, for several years. But his wife was also. I mean, he met his wife, which he, he went off witnessing one of these canyons, and there she was like she was sunbathing naked on the rock. He went up and witnessed to her. That's interesting. That's that's neither bold or something else. But anyway, he witnessed to her, led her to the Lord. And uh, she was baptized there and then, nude, in the, 
after a few months they got they got married and I think they were happy originally but I think their problems blew them apart after a few years so controversial figure but also not not just the Jesus people but um, he was he, he came back and, and got connected with John Wimber uh, before he was the originator of the vineyard movement and um, was invited to his church, kind of hung around John, and John, of course, was intrigued by he'd never seeing the power of God fall so much. Um, but he didn't really want all that. He didn't want it in his church because it, it, I think they were part of Calvary Chapel then, which had grown into a, a is a denomination now, Calvary Chapel, one church. Again, Lolly, you know, very, very sort of central in launching the Calvary Chapel network. Although perhaps they've kept that a little quieter, but the film at least does mention him. Apparently, I've not seen it, the Jesus Revolution film. But um, but John, so John knew of Lonnie and asked him to come and preach. And so, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna give him the Mother's Day service because there's not much he can do with that. You know, he's got probably got to stick to the thing. And um, but Lonnie, I, I've heard a bit of a recording of him speaking. And he, he was fiery and um, and then he started you know calm the Holy Spirit and I see the Holy Spirit on you guys over there you you three women over you it's the spirit on you and, and you begin to hear sort of sobbing in the background and a little bit of wailing going on and anyway apparently the people that were that meeting said that actually everybody and there were 300 people ended up on the floor quite quite you know in various states of kind of surrender to God, weeping, laughing, um, a bit like when Toronto broke out in, in City Church, really. Uh, well, Toronto, Toronto blessing, the Holy Spirit. I am, I know it's it's the Father's blessing, but we know what we mean. Shorthand, the Toronto blessing. Uh, when we came back, and uh, the church was never was never the same ever again, but and was completely different that day. But. Um, <laughs> John was sort of going, oh no, no, what's going on? Oh, because he knew it was kind of a bit frowned upon in the denomination that he was in. And uh, so he said, you know, he, he spent all night saying, God, is this you? Is this you? Is this you? And well, about all night, but anyway, to the wee small hours. And then I think it was in the middle of the night, a phone call came through and it was a mate of his from across somewhere what somewhere away it was completely uh, uncognizant of what had happened and he said John I just want to I, I just can't get to sleep the Lord has impressed upon me to ring up and say just these words it's me John it's me it's really me <laughs> okay Lord and um, so that that coupled with the fact that another guy who'd had three churches under him said I feel we need to bring my churches which were called the vineyard under you John and that was the start of the vineyard movement and so we see that uh, Lonnie Frisbee was instrumental in the starting of two major denominations the vineyard and Calvary Chapel as well as all the amazing changes that occurred uh, in the expression of Christianity particularly in the West um, so he's a very sort of pivotal figure. Um, unfortunately, John Wimber and this group of churches, they fell out really with, well, fell out's not really the, the correct term, but they had a meeting, tense meeting with uh, some of the other parts of Calvary Chapel, with Chuck Smith in particular. And what's very sad is that Chuck Smith, who'd been the beneficiary really of the spirits moving the messy moving of the spirit through Lonnie Frisbee and, and others um, kind of began to say to John, well, said to John, you know, if, you, if you're going to do church like this, really, we can't pass to you. And um, so they they kind of agreed to, to part. Um, it's just so how quickly the recipient of one move of God 10 years later can reject the current move of God. But of course, it doesn't it doesn't always appear like it's the move of God. With hindsight, we can say, oh, well, that was the move of God. But at the time, it might have looked like, you know, they've had severe, real, real questions about Lonnie Frisbee uh, and his the, the moral quality of his life, perhaps. And uh, just the, the sense of disorder. And I think we, we have this dilemma in the churches today. You know, really, though, it, it's a it's a reminder to us 
that sometimes the spirit wants to come and sweep away things. And often when you're, when you're cleaning, things can look worse than, bef than before you started. You know, chairs get moved out of place. Furniture gets moved out of place. There's a mess. You know, you, we, we sweep up the floor and there are sort of piles of stuff all over the floor. In other words, you can see the dirt more clearly when you're halfway through the process than, um, than you can previously, prior to the process. And that, that sometimes happens with moves of God. So what, what, what am I saying here is, is that those key things about that obedience to the moving of the Spirit, for leaders to get out of the way and allow the moving of the Spirit. And that's, that, that, it doesn't mean that we don't, you know, you don't, you don't exercise some degree of judgment, but we need to be careful about nascent moves of God. And the great John Arnott things, he, he, he would rather err on the side of not suppressing things than, than suppressing things. He did that once uh, when they had a move of God a long time prior to Toronto, uh, the, the outpouring in Toronto. And, and he swore and said to the Lord, if you ever you do that again, I will take my hands off it. Because they had a great movement among the youth in his church previously. Uh, and he had kind of tried to control it. And I think I think sometimes order can actually be control. We want to feel in charge. We want to be in charge because personally we don't like certain things. We're uncomfortable with certain things, things are new. We're worried about our reputation with outsiders, worried about our jobs, our income, particularly if, if we're leaders. And uh, so I'm always grateful to uh, Dave Campbell, the leader of the church at, at, uh, in St Albans, that he, he just... <laughs> the day he had his regional superintendent coming to speak the guy never got to speak <laughs> because of what god did that day when we came back from toronto and that dave ran with that and i think that was that was courageous sometimes to sit back and do nothing or not very much at all is the courageous thing to do so we need the holy spirit's activity in the front room not the back room you know, we don't need to be, you know, I, I, I take exception to people who say, right, well, you know, we have words of knowledge. And then if you want ministry, when the meeting's over, go go back out the back. That's, that's, that's putting the Holy Spirit in the back room. You know, let's let him move. Let's encourage him move. Let's encourage the people to respond to him. Even if things go out the window and, uh, you know, oh, that's dangerous. And like, yes. And I'm sure it looked that way. But look at what happened. And, and it always seems to happen. When you have the moving the spirit, you have mess and sometimes God moves through messy people. And that doesn't mean condone sin. It doesn't mean that people shouldn't be working on holiness. And, but, you know, if there's openness and honesty. And the other thing is not, not to use that. If people are open and honest, not to use it to shut them down necessarily. Uh, depends depends what, what the sin is and that, whether they're giving themselves over to it or not. But and what position they have. I mean, I'm not suggesting that Lonnie Frisbee should have been in charge of a church, you know, the head pastor or whatever. Um, but sometimes God may move through somebody in the youth and it's unpolished and it's uncouth maybe, uh, but we shouldn't, we shouldn't dampen it down. And I know it's far easier said than done. And I, you know, there are things I, I have been uncomfortable with in the past. And I don't particularly like women screaming, you know, in my right ear as, as they get seized by, a, you know, an intercessory urge to, to pray, <laughs> a sort of thing. You know, I'm not saying that after a while you don't sort of talk to people about things which, you know, may not be that edifying. But we have to be slow to judge, really, and quick to give room to the Holy Spirit's moving. Because I think that this is all portends something, the release of this film, um, the Asprey revival among young people, this sort of com this link being made with the Jesus People movement, I, I think this has a prophetic significance for this time. There's going to be a move of God, and it's going to be messy, and it is going to involve a lot of young people, untutored people, and and perhaps older people who think they know what they're doing should perhaps just be very gentle, hold things with a very light rein, and. Um, you know, not those of us who perhaps experienced stuff um, in the past, you know, may, maybe we need to be learned to be mothers and fathers in revival and, and, and not control, not squash, not say, well, this it should be done this way, not, not that way. 
but realize that God did something new and fresh in your life and uh, that he may want to do something new and fresh uh, in your life again and in the life of the church so hallelujah Lord bring it on and uh, help us not to control Lord help us to have your order where you bring order where you don't allow us to stand there hypocritically sort of indulging attitudes and sins that don't get touched week in week out um, oppressions and depressions I mean you know I'll, I'll never forget in Toronto that when the blessing poured out of people who were uh, you know, I remember one guy saying, I've got a new wife, you know, and in a good way, <laughs> you, know, you know, so people really changed and uh, and there will be things which were strange. I, I found it always strange that God would sometimes heal people, set them free uh, and and give them, they would increase in confidence. Uh, and and then in a few months, because because of that healing, they may well have then in their own exercise their own will and gone and sinned in a way that previously they hadn't now that that sounds weird that that making people whole can be dangerous <laughs> whole, whole people sometimes use their wholeness and co increase confidence and sense of 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 being somebody of worth that the love of god can bring can sometimes strangely but can make them prone to sin uh, i it's it's weird sometimes the gifts of god are can be misused the blessings of god can be misused and we can turn them into idols and uh, that is a, is a frequent history of that throughout uh, the history of the bible so but nevertheless do we want life or do we want the death of, of the same old same old behold i do a new thing not always not always a novel thing but a fresh thing, times of refreshing from the Lord. You know, we like fresh. Who doesn't like fresh bread? It's the same old bread. But we know that bread that's five days old isn't the same as you know, bread that's a day old. Uh, and yet it's it looks the same, but there's something intrinsically different. And it's the, the water, the moisture of the spirit, the life giving presence of God. Anyway, I'm rabbiting on again. But uh, trust that that's kind of blessed you. But get, you know, read a bit about Lonnie Frisbee. Look, maybe watch the film. I'm not sure the film. Some people, you know, it's it's good, but it's not entirely as things were. So um, a little bit, little bit messier. A little bit more about Lonnie Frisbee, maybe. <laughs> a little bit sort of downplaying the, the the divisions. Quite all, quite understandable, but not not necessarily good. And uh, maybe we should view Lonnie with. Um, more grace, uh, certainly with hindsight, knowing about his past. Anyway, God bless you. Bye now.